Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the IOFINA PLC 2021 results and company update investor presentation. Throughout this recorded presentation, investors will be in listen only mode. Questions are encouraged and can be submitted at any time via the Q&A tab that's just situated on the right hand corner of your screen. Please just simply type in your questions at any time and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question it receives during the meeting itself. However, the company will review all of the questions submitted today and publish responses where it is appropriate to do so. These will be available via your Investor Meet Company dashboard and we will notify you by email when these are ready for your review. Before we begin, I would like to submit the following poll and if you could give that your kind attention, I'm sure the company would be most grateful. And I'd now like to hand over to CEO Tom Becker and CFO Malcolm Lewin. Good afternoon. Great. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, I'm Tom Becker. I'm CEO of the group. Um, I've been with IFINA, actually with the IFINA chemical business, even before it was required, acquired by IFINA in 2003 is when I started. And uh, when IFINA acquired the chemicals business in 2009, um, I moved into the business side of the operations and have been CEO of the group since 2014. I'm a chemist by background, and I'll let uh, I'll throw it over to our CFO Malcolm Lewin to introduce himself real quick, and then we'll get started. Okay, yeah. So I'm Malcolm Lewin. I've been CFO of IFINA for a little over six years now. I'm UK based, just outside Oxford to be precise. Uh, prior to my role with IFINA, the preceding 15 years, I had CFO and FD roles with various companies, some of the main companies. And I originally qualified as a chartered accountant with uh, Coopers and Librand as they then were PwC as they now are. Okay, over to you, Tom. Great, thanks, Malcolm. Um, I, I think the purpose of today's um, presentation is hopefully threefold, um, to give a quick uh, background of the company, to review uh, where we've been in 2021 and in the past, and, and look at the results a bit that were just published earlier this month. And I think more importantly, talk about the direction of the company and provide an investment case um, and our plans for now and in the future. I also wanted to point out to everyone on the call that this morning we um, announced uh, the details of our AGM, which will take place in London on the 22nd of June. So uh, if you're interested, in, if you're a shareholder and interested in attending the AGM, please look at that announcement that was um, released today. So without further ado, we'll get started here. Um, we do have the general disclaimer slide that um, we have on all of our presentations. I will assume that everyone has read this, but if uh, please look back at this slide if you have any questions with respect to the dis disclaimer. Um, to get started, uh, IAFINA, we are the second largest item producer in the United States, and we are a specialty chemical company. Uh, all of our operations are in the United States with expertise in halogen-based chemistry. So we're talking chloro, fluoro, and iodo-based chemistries. If you remember back to um, your lessons in chemistry back in school, uh, we basically have two major business lines. Uh, the Iofina chemical unit, which is our specialty chemical unit, which produces halogen-based uh, molecules that are um, that are put into a number of different applications, including pharmaceuticals and biocides and semiconductors. And we'll get into those a little bit later in the presentation. But uh, our, our biggest and largest key raw ingredient for the chemicals business is iodine. And um, what I think makes Iofina a um, important and unique company is that we are backward integrated into the production of our key raw material iodine. And that's done through the IFINA resources side of the business, which developed and has developed technology to produce iodine from brine waters that are produced from oil and gas industry in the United States. We currently have five operating iodine production plants in Oklahoma. And we believe we're one of the most efficient producers of iodine in the world. Um, and, and financially, we've had our fourth consecutive record year of revenue and EBITDA. Uh, we're very excited about that. And we've um, accomplished a lot, I think, over the last few years to significantly uh, reduce the debt situation of the, of the company and continually improve our balance sheet. And that sets us up, I think, really well for the growth opportunities and the investments, reinvestment in the company that we plan here moving forward. Um, we're in a unique market, but it's a growing market. Um, the halogen specialty chemicals market is growing favorably, both in demand for our products in particular, and just generally in the in the overall global space. 
and sales prices for um, iodine and derivatives that we make of iodine and chlorobase compounds have risen here recently. We are committed as a company to grow the business, but evaluate things in a prudent manner so that we are being fiscally responsible in the growth aspirations of the business. And we're also committed to diversifying um, the growth of the business, not only through the new production of iodine, but through um, new R&D projects of chlorofluoroiodo-based chemicals, and even looking outside of um, our organic growth and possibly uh, add-ons to the business. Wanted to briefly talk about the, uh, you know, what kind of what makes IFINA tick? What what are our values? What are our business? How do we view business and and partnerships? And as a um, specialty chemical company or a chemical producer, sometimes you get a little bit of a bad rap because you're dealing with chemicals. And as you can imagine, um, you know, handling hazardous chemicals is something we don't take lightly. So safety for sure is our number one priority as a company, not only safety for our employees, but also our communities that we serve. Um, we um, consistently are evaluating our current processes and how we can improve the safety measures, whether that's through uh, personal protective equipment, whether that's through increased engineering controls. And we also are communicating all the time with the communities that we are involved with, um, making sure they understand what we do and how we can better work with them to make sure our operations um, don't affect the communities we serve. Um, as a company and management team, we are focused on the growth of the organization. Um, we're very proud of the growth that we've exhibited over the last number of years, and we want to continue to do that both at IFENA Chemical and at IFENA Resources, um, which um, we, we plan to continue to expand on the organic growth that we've uh, exhibited over the last few years. And this is not only with the uh, our known halogen-based chemistries to create new products and new product lines, but expand uh, current product lines within the IFINA chemical group, but it also um, create additional iodine producing uh, capabilities on our IFINA resource side. We are um, always looking at our R&D, creating new molecules, reinvesting in R&D so that we can and grow within and create new value added products for the organization. Um, as, a, as a chemical company, I think we have a unique environmental focus too and a story to be able to tell and both the chemical and resources side. Um, iodine is the most uh, common way for iodine to be produced is through um, the mining of ore in Chile, a caliche in Chile that has iodates in it that's blown up in the Atacama Desert and uh, it's a hard mining operation. We create our iodine in a much different way. Um, we're using a resource that is already being produced, um, and we extract our iodine um, from a waste stream that if iodine wasn't there, it would never be utilized. Um, this is more friendly than our competitors in Chile, and even more friendly from those competitors that drill their own brine wells that um, have an environmental impact that aren't already being produced in the, as a waste product in the oil and gas industry. Another thing from an environmental standpoint, I think, um, is not very well known that I want to um, tell our audience here and we'll be telling audiences in the future is that there's also a focus at Iathena Chemical, both historically and currently through minimization of use of uh, organic solvents. Uh, almost all of our technologies and reaction chemistries that we do at Iathena Chemical are aqueous-based or water-based chemistries. And this uh, minimizes the amount of organic solvents that are used in processes. And, and in fact, the organics that we do use in processes are generally a lot more environmentally friendly than others. For example, we don't use any chlorine, uh, chloro-based organic solvents in the chemistries that we do at Iofina Chemical. And we will continue to look for opportunities when we expand our chemistries to do, that, to do so in an environmentally friendly way. Um, it, just as far as how we deal with our culture and our customers and our business relationships, it's paramount to us to meet our customers' needs, to work with our customers, both on the current products that we supply to them, the quality and timeliness of um, deliveries to them, but also work with them and establish relationships with them. So when they're the new, new types of products, they come to IFINA first for their needs. And to that, when we look at our business relationships, not only with our customers, but potentially with our brine supply, um, partners, 
we look for relationships that are both mutually beneficial to IFINA and the other group we're working with. So we look at long-term situations where both companies are going to benefit. That way these uh, relationships can grow over time and not looking for any kind of short-term gain that uh, could potentially reduce long-term um, uh, relationships. And uh, I think the other core tenants that I want to touch on quickly are continual improvement as an organization. Um, we don't sit on our hands and just run as we've always run. We're always looking for ways to improve, not only from safety, but efficiencies and potentially new ways to create products. But we um, are continually, continuously looking to improve our organization. And um, the tenants that myself and our management team definitely act upon are um, when we when we act and deal with um, our company, our stakeholders, our employees, our partners, we do so with we do so with integrity, um, with honesty uh, in our communications, and we want to uh, prudently act in in, um, in 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 growth for not only our 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 employees and our in our company, but also with the shareholders that we serve uh, as an organization. So I want to briefly talk about our operations. We'll get into operations and, you know, um, and in and, and 2021, all of our operations are in the United States. Um, I'm currently sitting um, at our IFINA chemical site, which is in Northern Kentucky, just south of Cincinnati, Ohio. And that's where all the, um, the iodine and that's produced by IFINA resources and all the iodine and chloro and fluoro based compounds are created and then distributed and sold globally. Uh, the other um, five op operations, uh, uh, manufacturing plants are in Western Oklahoma. And you can see some de depictions of these, small depictions of these uh, plants that we have in Western Oklahoma. They are there because that's where the oil and gas field is, is, is um, expanding. Large volumes of brine are being produced and our geological team has identified um, where good concentrations of iodide are in these large volumes of water. And that's why we put our plants where we do. Um, and we also have a field office in, um, in Denver, which supports the uh, operations in Western Oklahoma. So a quick summary of some of the accomplishments that we saw in 2021, and we'll get into this a little bit more in detail. But the, some of the things that I particularly look at and our management and board of directors really look at is we're very proud of the um, success over the last number of years as far as revenue and profitability growth. Um, our revenues last year increased 31% to $39 million. Our EBITDA increased 47% up to just shy of $7 million. And you can see the trend line that we've had over the last number of years where we've had you know, four consecutive years of record revenue and growth. Um, I will make some comments um, in 2020 when COVID hit, um, in the second half of the year especially, there was a slowdown in the demand, especially for our iodine-based products. Um, not so much for our uh, fluoro-based products, but for our iodine-based products that um, if it wasn't for that slowdown, 2020 would have probably been an even better year. Caused us to carry some inventories of our iodine into 2021 and gave us a bit of a benefit in 2021 where markets um, recovered very rapidly and we were able to sell off a lot of that inventory that we carried at the end of 2020. Um, the other thing I'll point out on this slide is, um, I think is important, is uh, our net debt is now down to $3 million at the end of last year. We worked very hard to improve our balance sheet um, and in 2020 had a debt refinancing with a a banking institution, which is very, um, it's been a very good win, I think, for IFINA. And now we, as being able to reduce our debt and increase our profitability, we have the, I think, the ability now to uh, move this company forward more than it ever uh, had the capabilities of doing in the past. And just briefly here to also highlight some of the uh, accomplishments for 2021. Um, what did we actually do in 2021? We invested a lot in our chemicals business, um, increasing a, uh, a key product line, a fluoro-based um, compound that's used in the semiconductor industry to um, improve this particular process and allow for 
uh, continuing improvement of this process even into 2022 here and expansion of that process and some other replacement of equipment in order to uh, meet the meet the needs of our Iofina chemical plant. Um, we've commenced, we identified in the market that we wanted to expand our iodine production. We've commenced site negotiation processes for IO9. And um, frankly, we, we are disappointed that we are not under construction for IO9 yet. There's been a lot of circumstances with that, but we are, we believe we're very close to the finish line to, um, to finish the IO9 negotiations and get that started here shortly. Um, we were able to produce 518 metric tons of our crystalline iodine. That wasn't quite as much as we did the year before, and there were a couple of factors that affected that. One is um, a couple of weeks in February was a deep freeze in, in our areas of iodine production, and which caused oil and gas wells to shut in for a number of weeks. Um, that being coupled with oil and gas companies not um, as um, aggressive in their reinvestment into their oil and gas fields. Uh, when COVID hit and oil prices went down to zero, um, oil and gas companies, at least the partners that we deal with, and in general in the industry, have taken the stance of, uh, of keeping cash, paying more dividends to shareholders, and reinvesting less in their fields. As oil and gas prices have uh, dramatically changed over the last six months, uh, we are seeing more reinvestment back into the fields where our iodine or excuse me, where our brine supply comes to our plants. So we're very encouraged that our oil and gas partners are now reinvested into those fields. Um, we continue to uh, emphasize the diversification of our products in 2021. Um, we had a little over 30 million in sales of iodine and iodine derivatives and about $8.6 million in sales for our non-iodine based products. Um, this is a little bit down year on year for the non iodine based um, chemistries, but we saw, I think, an uptake at the end of 2020 for orders of non iodine based compounds, a little bit of a lull in 2021, and that's rebounded nicely here moving into early 2022. And at this point in time, I'll, I'm going to throw it back over to Malcolm, who can uh, review the financial financials in 2021 in a little bit more detail. Malcolm, over to you. Okay, so you've heard some of the points that are going to come out of this already from Tom, but working through uh, line by line, 2021 sales, profit and loss account, were up 31% overall on 2020, up from 29.7 to 39 million. And that breaks down into a 62% increase in iodine sales, which includes both raw iodine and derivative compound products, from 18 and a half to 30 and a half million and a 23% decrease in non-iodine sales from 11.2 million to 8.6 million. The substantial increase in iodine-based sales is mainly driven by a 53% volume increase in the amount of iodine used to produce sales from 479 metric tons in 2020 to 732 metric tons in 2021. 2020 figure of 479 tons was somewhat depressed by, as Tom's already mentioned, a COVID-related drop-off in demand that resulted in higher than normal iodine inventories at the end of 2020. It was bounced back in demand in 2021 that's reflected in the 732 metric tons of iodine sold last year. Within total iodine sales, <clears throat> the ratio of sales of derivative compound products to raw iodine sales moved in favor of derivatives which used 321 metric tons of iodine in 2021, 44% of the total, compared to 155 tons in 2020, when it was 32% of the total. Whereas raw iodine accounted for 411 metric tons 2021, compared to 324 metric tons in 2020. Prices achieved for raw iodine averaged $36.03 per kilogram in 2021, compared to $34.84 in 2020, an increase of 3% and therefore not a major factor in the increase in sales. 2022, the pricing landscape has changed significantly upwards with spot iodine prices currently, <clears throat> excuse me, above $60. Non-iodine sales have been particularly strong in 2020 at $11.2 million, but dropped back by 23% to 8.6 million in 21. 
Uh, some has already referred, I think. It seems one key product have been somewhat overstocked by a customer in 2020 based on COVID concerns, and there was a downwards correction in ordering in 2021. Gross profit percentage margins over costs of materials for 21 were similar to 2020 across product categories. Cost of operating the Ifena chemical plant were at the same level as for 2020. There was a 13% increase in average production cost per kilogram at Iafina Resources, reflecting similar operating costs to 2020 applied to a 15% lower production output, to which Tom's already referred. The net consolidated result was a gross profit of 10.7 million for 2021, representing 27% of sales, compared to a gross profit of 8.4 million for 2020, representing 28% of sales, an increase of 2.3 million. After deducting 2021 SGA, selling general and administrative overheads of 3.8 million, virtually unchanged from the 2020 number of 3.7 million. 2021 EBITDA came in at 6.9 million, 47% higher than the $4.7 million for 2020. Depreciation and amortization of 1.7 million, 1.8 for 2020, are then deducted in arriving at the 2021 operating profit figure of 5.2 million, 78% higher than the 2020 figure of 2.9. Moving on down the PL, there are two exceptional items. The first is a $1.1 million credit for US government loans waived. This was a covered subsidy under a scheme known as PPP, Paychecks Protection Program. The main condition for forgiveness of these loans was the maintenance of payrolls at pre covered levels. IAFINA met the criteria and repayment was officially waived early in 2021. The second item is the 100% impairment of the 2019 investment of $0.9 million in the hemp seed production project. <clears throat> I know Tom is going to say a bit more about this later, but the, um, the, the, the project has not provided any of the returns forecast on the basis of market conditions at the time of the investment. Covid was a, a significant factor, and in view of uncertainty about any future income, the investment has been fully written off. Uh, finance costs were greatly reduced in 2021 with interest of 0.4 million compared to 1.1 million for 2020, a saving of 0.7 million. The reduction reflects a debt re refinancing and restructuring finalised in September 2020 with a new banking partner. There was also a one off charge of half a million dollars for loan arrangement fees in 2020. Profit before tax improved by 3.8 million from 1.3 million uh, to 5.1 million. The improvement mainly reflects much stronger trading driven by increased demand for iodine together with a step change reduction in borrowing costs resulting from the September 2020 refinancing. Uh, finally, for the PL, the deferred tax credit of 4.1 million, unusual item reflects the estimated future value of tax that will be saved by set off against profits of $19.4 million of US federal tax losses accumulated over previous years. These losses were previously recorded in the accounts uh, by way of a note only on the basis that the timing of future recovery was uncertain. In light of ongoing utilization of these losses at a higher level, the value of the losses has now been recorded as an asset on the balance sheet in accordance with international accounting standards with the resulting credit to profit and loss account. Earnings per share is shown as 4.8 cents through the inclusion of the deferred tax, $4.1 million non-operating item. If that is excluded, EPS becomes 2.7 cents versus 0.7 cents for 2020. So Tom, if we then turn to the balance sheet, <clears throat> okay. As regards fixed assets, there was capex of one and a half million dollars, mainly on new projects, process improvements and replacements at the Iafina chemical plant. After deduction of 2021 depreciation, there was little change in the balance sheet value of property plant and equipment. The deferred tax asset of 4.1 million has just been discussed and will be amortized to the profit and loss account in future periods in line with the tax savings from utilization of the related tax losses. Inventories were significantly $3.4 million lower than for 2020. 
and receivables were $2.6 million higher, reflecting more normal levels after the demand slowed down during 2020. Bank debt was reduced from four point, by, so excuse me, by 4.1 million from 12.4 million to 8.2 million through $1.4 million scheduled repayments of the bank term loan and the group electing to pay down the $2.7 million revolving line of credit balance to nil. That facility remains in place for future drawdowns if required. Net debt, bank debt less cash, came down to 3 million from 8.9 million at the end of 2020, reduction of 5.9 million. The generation of that cash is shown on the next slide, to which we will now go. Okay, the cash flow numbers are straightforward. EBITDA profit of $6.9 million is most of the story. Working capital adjustments were $0.9 million positive, notably due to the reduction in inventories already mentioned. After CapEx of $1.5 million, interest paid of $0.4 million, both already discussed, net cash generation was $5.9 million, the effect of which was to reduce net debt from $8.9 to $3.0 million. And that concludes this review of the financial numbers. Great, thanks, Malcolm. Um, we'll move on to the next section of the presentation, which goes over the, the market, um, our IFENA chemicals, specialty chemicals unit, and then where we, we see the outlook of the company here moving forward. So with respect to the markets and the, and the things that, we're, uh, that we do our business in, um, current IDEN market fundamentals are favorable. Um, IDEN spot prices, um, are generally well over $60 a kilo now. And while contract prices are slightly lower than spot prices, um, item prices are, are significantly up over the last nine months. And it's been a factor of uh, very much a increase in demand in, 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 uh, in markets where iodine is used. And that's been globally, but especially in Asia. And even recently with the lockdowns in Shanghai, in China, um, the Asian market, in India, China, and Far East are, are very strong with respect to demand for iodine and iodine-based products. Um, and in fact, prices are even a little bit higher in Asia than they are in the rest of the world. Um, it's driven by a lot of human healthcare applications, x-ray contrast media, antiseptic, antiseptic usages, uh, pharma usages. These are all pretty strong. And we anticipate these markets to remain strong, especially in Asia as, um, the middle class continues to rise, that opportunities for improved health care uh, become uh, more available to uh, more people, um, these iodine applications um, will likely rise here in the future. Um, at Iofina Chemical, we've seen strong sales of our iodine derivatives in 2022, uh, especially into the pharma, industrial catalysis, and biocidal applications. And even these non item based products, which we've already touched on earlier, have seen a nice recovery into uh, late um, first quarter of 2022 and into the second quarter, especially with uh, semiconductor application usages of a fluorine based product. Just to get into um, our IFENA chemical specialty chemical side uh, a bit further, because I think you know, as an organization, we talk a lot about our iodine production, but I think the iodine chemical unit, which takes iodine, adds extra value to the iodine that we use and distributes these products around the world, is oftentimes uh, not emphasized enough as part of the iodine organization. And it's an org iodine chemical organization is a it's an older company. It, it was started in 1983. Uh, it has global sales. It has a sales team that. Um, is the hub for IAFINA sales. All the iodine, all the iodine derivatives, all the chloro derivatives, all the fluoro derivatives all go through IAFINA chemical. And it produces a range of products with a diverse range of applications. And I think that's important as a tenant for IAFINA's business plan. We wanna to continue to diversify what we offer, the number of products and the number of applications that it goes into because there are often times when there's growth in areas of uh, applications, but there's also some times where there's a con uh, where applications contract a bit. So if we continue to diversify the number of applications and especially focus on those where we believe there's growth in the future, it will be better for IFINA 
as a whole. Um, these iAffina, these derivative products that take the iodin from iAffina resources add value to it. So we not only get the margin from the difference in our production costs to the sales price of iodine, but the add-on margin that you get from um, the derivative prices that you're able to achieve once you create a new compound. Um, as we mentioned, we not only create iodine-based compounds, but we make, we make chloro and fluoro-based compounds, which contributes to our sales and diversification. And we're very focused on the R&D efforts here. We're um, currently um, investing in our lab situation at iAffina Chemical across the parking lot from where I am today um, to expand the, the capabilities to create new products, to increase our analytical capabilities, and to expand our current pro uh, product lines. And just to give you a feel for um, the end markets that iodine is used and where iAffina's iodine and iAffina uh, chemical products go into, Iafina Resources Iodine is moved into almost all applications around the world. Uh, the pie chart that's shown on the left of this particular slide uh, indicates the general fields of where iodine is used globally. And frankly, with the exception of X-ray contrast media, um, Iafina Resources Iodine are sold into all the other uh, pieces of the chart, um, whether it's into uh, pharmaceuticals, uh, LCD screens or, or to manufacturers that produce these end products. Um, as far as Iafina chemicals um, pieces of the pie, they're shown um, where the Iafina chemical symbol is next to the pie chart. So we focus on um, areas of, and produce compounds that support pharmaceutical manufacturing, uh, industrial catalysis, biocides, and other applications. So to give you a few examples, we create biocides that go into paints and coating applications. It prevents mold and mildew in, uh, in paints, and not only in the can, but on the wall. Um, it's also used as a preservative in cosmetics and machine fluids. Um, it's used in, we, we create compounds that are used in pharmaceutical applications as an input into a cholesterol-based drug. Simvastatin uses a iodide base compound that's produced at Iafina Chemical. So uh, we try to create unique iodide-based compounds that go into multiple different applications and grow with our customers and find new applications for iodine. Um, this is not a, a regional kind of um, aspect. Iafina sells around the world with about half of our 2021 business uh, from a revenue standpoint in North America and about half going to the rest of the world. And the, and the major markets outside of North America we serve, uh, Asia is by far the largest with also some significant sales into Europe and South America and especially Brazil. If you've seen presentations from Iafina and myself before, um, this is a chart that we continue to update because I think it gives some insight into the Iden market where iodine prices are, where demand and production is. So the chart attempts with a red line to show production and demand for iodine around the world. And the yellow line uh, shows current um, spot prices for iodine and historical prices for iodine. And as you can see, um, there's continued uh, growth in demand for iodine around the world. Right now, um, the demand for iodine is outpacing the supply, and that's one of the reasons why we're seeing a significant increase in price here um, in the near term. Um, Iafina is, um, is keen to increase its iodine out output, whereas in the rest of the world in 2022, we don't see any real increase in uh, production growth um, from the iodine suppliers. Um, the Iafina, excuse me, the iodine market tends to grow to about a three to five percent output year over year. That would put it anywhere between a thousand to possibly fifteen hundred metric tons of growth year over year. And we do believe there will be some additional investments in Chile to um, increase supply, but we believe that the supply of iodine compared to the demand is going to be very tight, while the demand will continue to grow, especially in these human healthcare applications here moving forward. And the historical trend of the iodine price is also showed in the gray line. So it's not unreasonable for iodine prices to be at or where they are today. 
Um, so when we look at what are future trends of iodine going to be, are they going to be at these levels in the future? Well, we don't know that for certain. We do believe they're going to be at high levels throughout 2022, but it's not unreasonable to consider iodine prices well above $50 a kilo um, moving forward into future years. So where are we going as an organization? What are our goals, not only in the near term, but you know, its growth as an organization? So as a specialty chemical manufacturer you know, with um, a, a stronger balance sheet, generating cash, established technologies, how do we grow as an organization? We're gonna, well, our plans are to continue to grow as an organization organically through our current business um, model, and also look for opportunities um, similar to where our business model is and potentially add-ons for the organization. So how do we grow Iofina Chemical and its offerings? We're investing in R&D efforts in our laboratory to produce uh, and have the capabilities of supporting existing products and uh, realize new product development. Um, we are uh, investing in uh, non-iodine and iodine-based products at Iofina Chemical, including a product that um, you know, we've partnered up with a customer that purchases an iodide-based compound. They use it in their process, um, and most of the iodide is consumed, but not all of it. So we have a um, partnership with them where we actually take a stream of their output of their process and re-isolate uh, the iodine and then provide them more products. So we have this circular kind of relationship with them. It... Um, it's advantageous for both groups and um, it's advantageous for a long-term business relationship because we provide not only front end, but back end solutions for their uh, particular needs. Um, how do we grow on the IFINA resource side? We grow on the IFINA resource sides by creating new investments in iodine production. And we are committed to doing that at IO9. Um, we are, we are in negotiations with IO9. We've said this for a long period of time, and unfortunately, we haven't quite reached the end line yet. Um, as we've said recently, I'm very optimistic that we will reach the finish line here shortly for IO9, get IO9 online and in production for 2022. Um, there's been a number of different um, changes, COVID related, personnel related on our partner side that has caused a, a bit of delay for these negotiations. And these deals are never done until they're done, but I'm extremely optimistic that we'll get IO9 done and uh, under construction here in the short term. At the same time, we're also looking at opportunities, especially with an improved balance sheet, a iodine market, which is ever expanding, to look at opportunities for IO10 and beyond. So while we're looking at uh, finalizing IO9, we're concurrently working on projects for IO10. We've learned lessons from the past not to move too quickly, but I think um, our recent successes at IO7 and IO8, our uh, ability um, from a financial standpoint to be more sound as an organization, we would be looking to bring on IO10 more rapidly than we would have in the past um, since I've been in charge of the organization. And we're also committed to look at all different types of projects with rapid payback. Um, as, as I keep alluding to, our our reduction of debt, our partnership with a new financial institution that we we accomplished in 2020 is a major object is a major win for the organization. It allows us more flexibility to uh, reinvest in the in the company, but we are committed to uh, financial uh, frugality to make sure that um, any project that we reinvest has rapid payback. That while there's always risks in every project, that we do our due diligence to make sure that these risks are minimized and that we have the proper debt to EBITDA ratio here moving forward as an organization. Um, with respect to debt, you know, we keep reducing debt, but I think it's healthy as an organization if you have projects that can continue to grow the organization, that a small amount of debt compared to your profitability is, is a prudent way to run business moving forward. As we continue to look at the outlook of the organization, where are we going? We're committed to growth in all, all areas with our improved financial position. Sorry, one second. The specialty chemical market is strong, including the strong recovery in the iodine market. So we're in a we're in a in, in a space where there's a lot of demand, 
And currently that demand is outpacing supply and prices are high. That is a benefit to IFINA, especially as an iodine producer, because we are, we feel we're one of the lowest cost producers of iodine in the world. We have a stable model that we can produce iodine. And um, while there are inflationary costs to us and to all the other iodine uh, producers in the world, we are at a uh, production cost well, well below the current market price of iodine. So we gain margin on our iodine uh, from that. We will continue to invest in our IFINA chemical um, company, which I've already covered, and invest in our IFINA resource side through our continual model of producing iodine plants that take um, iodine from produced water of oil and gas companies. We're finalizing this agreement for IO9. We're concurrently working on uh, agreements for IO number 10 so that when those are ready to go and we're ready to pull the trigger to produce another iodine plant, that those are um, um, being able to uh, be accomplished in a timely fashion. And we're looking at other aspects to be able to improve uh, and increase our iodine production, whether that is through uh, controlling the brine water, uh, potentially drilling brine wells, controlling saltwater disposal wells, looking at uh, more mobile plants at smaller sites. These are all ways that we'll be looking in the future to um, continue to grow our iodine production side of the organization. In the short term, we do expect to produce uh, 225 to 240 metric tons in the first quarter of 2022, which we've um, set as our goal at the beginning of the uh, year, and we're on track to meet those internal expectations. So what's the investment case for IAFINA? Um, we believe we have a unique technology and a unique and growing space. Uh, we've proven this over the last four years. We have growth plans to continue to build iodine plants, increase the amount of products that we manufacture at IAFINA Chemical in such a way that um, we expect in the next few years to be the largest producer of iodine in North America. And with this increasing um, need for iodine and iron-based compounds, our unique technology, our unique way that we can grow uh, quickly with smaller plants than our competition, all puts us at an advantage to um, expanding our operation. As I said, iodine, our non-iodine derivatives are commodities in demand. Uh, despite a brief slowdown that we saw in iron demand due to COVID in 2020, demand has bounced back very strongly. It's reflected not only in, um, in what we've seen in volumes, but also the prices of iodine and iodine-based compounds. We're not some startup. We have proven our technology. We have five plants in operation. We plan to build more iodine-based plants, and um, we continue to um, look for new opportunities to produce iodine and iodine-based compounds, specifically with iodine using our geological team and modeling, which is unique in the space. So we know where the large volumes of, of, of brine water are that have high concentrations of iodide, and we follow where oil and gas companies are growing. And we'll be continuing to use that model in the future. We have a strong balance sheet, which we've improved significantly over the last few years, record-setting revenues and EBITDA, reduction of debt, all these improve our balance sheet to be able to have us reinvest in the company um, here moving forward. We continue to want to diversify our business. Uh, we are, our, our key raw material is iodine. Our key products that we produce are iodine based, but these go into a number of different applications and we will continue to diversify those applications of products that we offer. And we also offer um, other halogen-based chemistries as well. We believe this diversification is smart, it's prudent, it allows for ebbs and flows in, um, in how, econ how, how things run. And you know, who knows what's gonna happen in the economy here over the next um, you know, two years. Uh, while things are all moving forward currently in the iodine world, there could be uh, conflicts around the world, there could be um, inflation-based recessionary things that happen in, in, in the future. And the more we diversify our business and control our costs, the better off we're going to be. And uh, lastly, before we get to questions, um, I, I want to say that I, I think we've built a great management team with a diversified um, expertise, whether there are uh, 
chemists, oil and gas operators, geologists, um, uh, financial experts, um, experts in uh, debt and M&A. We have all those on our uh, on our team. And I think that gives us perspective into not only operating our company efficiently and doing well, but also look for growth opportunities in the future. And I wanna just say, before we get to questions and answer, I wanna thank our, uh, our audience today. And I wanna thank our investors for uh, IAFINA. I think it's a unique uh, time for the organization. And uh, we look forward to um, growing the organization here over the next few years to be the largest iodine producer in North America. And for that, I will now throw it back to start our question and answer period. Tom, that's great. And Malcolm as well. Thank you very much indeed for your presentation this afternoon. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please do continue to submit your questions just by using the Q&A tab that's situated on the right hand corner of your screen. Uh, but just while the company take a few moments to review those questions submitted already, I would like to remind you that a recording of this presentation, along with a copy of the slides and the published Q&A can be accessed via your investor dashboard. Uh, Tom, Malcolm, we did receive a number of pre-submitted questions ahead of today's event, as well as, as you can see, a number of questions that have been submitted throughout today's presentation. Uh, firstly, can I thank all the investors for submitting their questions? And Tom, Malcolm, if I could just hand back to you to read out those questions and address them where it's appropriate to do so, and then I'll pick up from you at the end. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for doing that. Um, we have looked over the pre-submitted questions. Um, we'll, we'll look briefly at these questions that were submitted today, and I'll apologize if we don't get to some or all of the questions that are submitted today in the time that we have. Um, but we did look at the, um, but, and if we don't get to those questions today is, is what we said at the beginning of the presentation, we'll attempt to uh, answer those questions in writing on the IMC platform uh, if it's appropriate to do so. Um, there are a number of questions that were submitted um, before the presentation. What we've done is we've grouped these questions into a number of different categories so they can be answered uh, as a whole. And uh, Malcolm and I will go through those now. So. Um, there's two areas of questions that are currently really um, not part of our core business that the company is planning here in the future. And those are uh, questions related to Atlantis and IFINA EX. And I'll, I'll just start with those real quick. Um, there were a couple questions with related to our former Atlantis project in Montana and whether we still held assets and leases and whether the company intended to uh, continue any kind of business there. Um, for those investors that aren't familiar with the Atlantis project, uh, when we went public in 2009, um, IAFINA was, um, had leases for natural gas production in the state of Montana. And it was a dual concept model where IAFINA would be producing natural gas and also extracting iodine from the brine uh, co-produced with the natural gas. Um, we did that for uh, the first few years of, of being public um, at the same time, natural gas prices during that time uh, plummeted in the United States, and that project became unviable over a period of time. We did learn lessons for um, iodine extraction with the technology we used at that time, but that project has been closed for a number of years. Uh, we did decide to not renew leases in that particular area, and there is no intent even as um, Natural gas prices have risen here, risen here slightly in the United States. Their uh, company, it's not part of our core, um, our core business here moving forward. Uh, the only asset that we still currently have up in Montana is there is a building that we uh, have tentatively sold to another um, company. And as long as they continue to make payments on that particular building, that title will move to them in the future. So essentially, the Atlantis project uh, is, 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 is a non-factor for IAFINA here moving forward. With respect to IAFINA EX, there are a, a number of questions regarding our um, IAFINA EX and our seed investment. Uh, regarding why we took on the project, what we learned, is there any value still there, and whether we would do uh, related party deals in the future. And I, I would say is we're always looking for growth opportunities in our specialty chemical business. Um, back when we first had this uh, project presented to us um, with respect to looking at uh, CBD manufacturing from hemp, uh, that market was a booming, growing market, um, and it was booming uh, a lot before COVID. Uh, we investigated opportunities that would utilize our chemical knowledge, our batch processing, distillation, extraction, analytical chemistry, which is all, which are all things we do at IFINA Chemical 
to see if uh, Iofena could be a um, cannabinoid, CBD, CBD, CBG extractor. Uh, we also investigated other opportunities in this space to see if we could be a complete seed to sale solution from, from, from growth of seeds to plants all the way to the end customers. Um, we quickly learned um, in the extraction investigations that we did that it was unlikely that we were going to differentiate ourselves from the competition. So we stopped that pretty quickly. Uh, we also knew that there would be a lot of upfront investment that would be needed to be a strong player in this. And we just felt like the risks there were too much. At the same time, we were looking for uh, opportunities internationally for this seed to sale kind of business and evaluated those opportunities. And, and, and after our risk assessment, we decided it was too high of a risk. The seed opportunity was an investment opportunity that was um, brought to us that we decided to invest in based on the market conditions at the time. Um, it was successful in creating seeds, over 20 million of organically um, certified seeds. However, the business um, of selling the seeds and the competition of seeds changed dramatically. And unfortunately, we have not, as Malcolm touched on during his um, presentation, we have in reason for impairment of the seeds, we have not found a solution to be able to sell these seeds into the marketplace. So the uh, seeds have been um, written down on our um, on our financials. But we do have these seeds that are viable and are attempting to sell the seeds. So uh, I don't know whether there's going to be any value of these seeds in the future. We will attempt to monetize these seeds. Uh, but I think we've learned lessons from this. The lessons that we've learned are we need to really focus on products that are more core in our chemical business, our specialty chemical business. Uh, we are not farmers. We are not growers. We do not understand that business as well. So we want to focus here in the future on those areas of business, specialty chemical production, iodine production uh, in the future. Will we ever do a related party transaction in the future? I would say that is very unlikely. I would never say never um, on business opportunities in the future. Um, there are also a couple of questions, and we covered a lot of this, I think, already uh, about the iodine market. And there were two questions in particular. One had to do with what are the likelihood of item prices in the $50 to $60 kilo range versus the $30 to $35 kilo range in the future? And also assess uh, IFENA's position in the marketplace. So um, it's always difficult to predict the pricing of uh, things in the future, especially with uh, the volatilities we've seen in the global economies over the last number of years with COVID, with uh, political tensions around the world, um, you know, we've, we've seen a strong recovery after COVID. Now we're seeing inflation. So how that has that going to affect uh, demand for products in the future? It's, it's, it's difficult to predict. Um, right now, we're seeing strong demand for uh, iodine and projecting high iodine prices in 2022. Um, demand is strong and supply is steady at best. What the future holds is less certain. But I personally feel, and I believe the company feels that prices in the 30s are less likely than prices in the 50 long term, as this is in line with historical trends and as production costs for the iodine producers continue to rise and the largest applications of uh, iodine use continue to expand like X-ray contrast media applications. Um, I think this position in the market is a low percentage with great opportunities. We feel we're a low cost producer compared to our competition we do it in a more environmentally friendly manner and in a more stable um, government situation in the United States versus where some of the other uh, miners might have some difficulties with the current political situation in their company, in their country. And we have the ability to expand our uh, operations in a small but relatively fast way compared to our competition with low upfront costs and rates of growth that should not disrupt the supply demand dynamics. Um, and also as a specialty chemical producer, we gain margin both on the iodine we produce and any other kind of specialty chemicals we produce in the future. So uh, we like our position in the market. We will continue to grow our position in a way that um, doesn't disrupt the market, but um, is also within our, um, our, our, core, uh, our, our, our core mechanism of how we do business. Uh, Malcolm, I'm gonna throw it to you for the next set of questions. <clears throat> Okay, there were a couple of questions that were kind of in the <clears throat> finance arena. And the first one, a couple of people asked, when will debt be completely eliminated? 
Well, I think you've already probably got from some of the things Tom said that that's <clears throat> not quite how we're, how we're looking at debt at the moment. I think it's worth just quickly revisiting uh, what's happened to debt in the last few years. So beginning of 2019, we had $25.6 million of debt. Cash balances were $4.5 million. Net debt was $21.1 million. And then three years later, end of last year, debt's down to $8.2 million. Cash balances are up to 5.2 and our net debt's 3 million so we reduced net debt by 18 million from the beginning of 2019 to the end of last year and uh, the interest payable that was 1.6 million in 19 is down to 0.4 million for last year um, also which is a really important factor in terms of our uh, corporate costs and when we did the um, uh, the refinancing. I, I would say a key part of our debt turnaround was uh, getting the, a new banking partner who has already provided finance that suits our needs and really importantly is supportive of our growth intentions. So we don't see debt now as an overhanging issue, but rather than as a, what well, I'm calling it a component of the growth toolbox to be used to help us to grow faster than we otherwise might in particular by funding capital projects. But any increase in debt would be within the confines of banking covenants that inter alia tied debt to EBIT to earnings, to EBIT to earnings and therefore put a cap on borrowings. So the short answer to the question is we don't plan to eliminate debt as we see a modest level of debt as advantageous. But it should be noted that all our borrowings <coughs> are structured so they can be paid off at any point without penalty, subject to unwinding interest rate hedges, should we choose to do so? And I think that's probably about where we are on debt. The, um, there was another question asking about uh, the provision of further analysis in our financials so as to give more visibility to the chemicals operation uh, as well as the iodine production activities. And again, Tom's made some comments about that as he's gone through his presentation. And the answer is that, yeah, we are, we are aware that we haven't moved on very much in, in terms of the, uh, some of the, how can I put it, uh, operational analysis that we provide in our uh, half year and full year reports. And we are going to work on that and, and, and bring out more. But I can't at this point say exactly what it'll be. It does present a few challenges because the chemical business and the iodine production business are very closely entwined, but, but something will be forthcoming. Okay. Thanks, Malcolm. Um, and I know we're running a, little, a bit short on time. I'll, I'll, I'll attempt to get through all the pre-submitted questions here. And it looks like we'll probably um, any any of the questions that were submitted during the uh, presentation um, will probably be answered um, um, on the on the uh, IMC website. So there are a number of questions submitted related to our item production, our view of IO9 and its timeline as well as IO10 and uh, additional item production questions related to the ability or need to move poor producing item plants and the useful life of plants. So uh, as I mentioned before, our, our timing for IO9 has not been ideal. Um, location choices, COVID resurgent at the end of last year, uh, personnel changes that our new partner and dealing with a new partner are all reasons why we've not yet uh, hit the finish line with IO9. Um, it is a disappointment for us, frankly. Um, we are working hard to get to that finish line. We believe we have a good location, a good partner, and in an area of growth, um, but we frankly have not crossed that finish line, but all current signs indicate we are close to complete. Um, but I, I, I will say that until it's finished, it's not complete. So we are working hard to do that. Um, we have pre-ordered many key components so we can execute the construction as soon as possible. And we are also concurrently negotiated for possible IO10 sites, mostly with new partners, but also with a current partner as well. We are um, assessing the best timing for IO10. And you know, uh, once we get IO9 um, completed, or not completed, um, the contract completed for IO9 and under construction, we'll be uh, focusing a lot more on IO10, getting sites signed up, and, and uh, evaluating when the proper timeline is to build an IO10. Um, we've learned uh, lessons from past management decisions on plant locations, and we perform our best due diligence efforts for these new sites. That said, every business has risks, and this is um, and these sites are risks for IFINA. Um, 
and and when we get to um, moving old plants, you know, old production, old poor choices in plant sites um, have resulted in Iothena moving plants. Um, we've moved Io3 to Io7. We're using some components from Io5 in our new Io9 uh, facility. So um, currently, there's no plans to move any any other producing plants. They are all strong producing plants that are profitable um, iodine producers. Um, and as far as the lifetime of plants, um, we've run IO2 over nine years. We believe uh, our, our plants have a useful life of up to 20 years or more. Uh, we've seen positive progress in reinvestment in our partners in their oil and gas fields. And we believe the COVID blip, which saw oil go to zero and caused investments to decrease by oil and gas operations is more of an anomaly than uh, a prediction of the future. Um, so I think that answers most of those questions. Um, there's also um, some questions about ongoing corporate strategy, which I'll finish up on. Um, and essentially with the sound balance sheet and financial footing, how do we view organic growth and, and what's our vision over the next couple of years? And, and also comment on you know, other business opportunities, including uh, further monetizing the brine we use. Um, we've worked, we worked very hard over the last number of years to establish IFINA as a profitable, low-cost company geared for growth. Um, it's, it's been mentioned a number of times in this uh, seminar, the debt restructuring was a major win for IFINA. And now we have a low debt to EBITDA ratio. Uh, with these wins and positive momentum now and anticipated markets growth that we serve, we will invest back in the company for growth. But we will continue to learn from lessons lessons in the past and prudently make decisions when it comes to evaluating growth opportunities. Um, but we will likely look to grow at a faster pace now with our improved positioning. IO9 and IO10 are ways we expect to grow soon organically. We're making substantial investments at IFINA Chemical to increase capacities and, and to invest in new products and R&D opportunities. We intend over the next few years to be the largest uh, North American iodine producer. That said, we intend to use physical responsibility when making these decisions and, to do, and do the right due diligence and risk assessments when determining where and when to invest. Um, growth of the company outside of organic growth within IFINA Chemical and IFINA Resources, I believe now is a, it's a possibility. We'd be looking for um, add-ons to the specialty chemical business, whether it be full businesses or product lines, other JVs that make sense to us that would add value to the organization. But um, these possibilities, um, there's nothing absolutely imminent. We are looking around and we would not um, execute on this without doing the, that full due diligence and making sure that the deal is right within our core competencies and right with respect to cost to do the deal. Um, monetizing brine streams for other components such as lithium, bromine, magnes uh, magnesium, are all things that we are considering and looking at. We, um, we use brine streams, a waste stream to extract iodine. All brine streams are different. So certain brine streams have certain components, other brine streams have other components, but our geological team is looking for other opportunities outside of iodine. Uh, we will continue to really focus on our iodine production, and uh, but also look for value of other minerals whether it's through directly through IFINA or through partnerships with other technology-based companies to provide comprehensive solutions to um, the partners that we uh, that we use for to um, obtain our brine streams. Um, I think I'll just end here as we, we've gone a bit over time is that we believe the company's in the best position ever with the positive momentum uh, that we've carried and we're committed to uh, reinvest in the company. Uh, in our core areas to spur additional growth throughout our traditional methods while evaluating non-traditional methods for growth in the future. Uh, we're excited for the next few years. We think we're in a market which is growing and we think we have um, good management team, good um, employees and uh, good technology to uh, be successful here uh, moving forward. And uh, I think 
I'll throw it back. I think that's where I'll end the Q and A session. Tom, that's great. Malcolm, as well. Thank you for addressing all of those questions that you can uh, from investors this afternoon. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, as Tom kindly did mention, the company will review all of the questions submitted today, and we'll publish those responses on the Investor Meet Company platform where it's appropriate to do so, and you'll be notified by email when these are ready for your review. Uh, Tom, perhaps for redirecting the attendees on the call uh, to provide you with their feedback, which I know is particularly important to yourself and the company, if I could just ask you for a few closing comments to wrap up with that would be great yeah that'd be great um yeah again thanks for everybody for attending today hope it was um informative not only of our current operations but our um our commitment to reinvest in the company um we are excited about the iden market we're excited about the specialty chemical market we've learned lessons from the past of what to do and what not to do there's always risks with respect to the organization we will evaluate those risks as we continue to reinvest in the uh, organization. And we look to really grow this organization here over the next couple of years and provide shareholder values as, as much as we possibly can. So I hope uh, our investors and our potential investors enjoyed the presentation today. And we hope to be able to do these types of presentations here moving forward. That's great. Tom, Malcolm, thank you very much indeed for updating investors today. Could I please ask investors not to close this session as you'll now be automatically redirected for the opportunity to provide your feedback in order that the management team can better understand your views and expectations. This will only take a few moments to complete, but I'm sure will be greatly valued by the company. On behalf of the management team of IFINA PLC, we would like to thank you for attending today's presentation. That now concludes today's session. So good afternoon to you all.